so we get experimental yes. science. We're curious, non-judgmental. Story of the week. We've been doing this now again for the past two weeks. We're doing it again. This week is the new species of the week. The new species. Actually, this doesn't even tell you, does it? The title. Sturisoma Swainson, 1838, from the May Deer River Basin, a discussion of the historiographical biogeography of Western Amazons and Paraguay basins. Let me show y'all a picture. This thing. Gwendolyn P. is right. It is a fish. It is a fish. It does look like a tiny sturgeon, but Cliff, it's more closely related to something even... It is most closely related to a catfish. It is most closely related to a catfish. Isn't it a cool looking fish though? Let's take a look at them. There's actually a news story about them as well. Can it eat a dog? The fish? No, it's a pretty tiny fish. So we're chatting a little bit about just these close relatives of this fish. Uh, in particular, uh, these plecos, which- uh, pleco. Well, they're invasive and they cause a lot of trouble. The Plecostomus chat um, is the close relative, so that's one flavor of these. Um, they did some genetic sequencing to figure out how distant, really, distantly related it is from the existing armored catfish, and they found it's you know it's close, but it's its own ta it's its own taxa, so it's pretty in the phylogenetic tree it's relatively close but it has its own little group that comes out again the big focus they had is on the molecular level so they did this um cytochrome c sequencing so cytochrome c is a gene a gene group that varies it's around chromo chromosomes and uh the centromeres and that is subject to high levels of mutation and is a feature of speciation so when those regions are mutated it usually leads to incompatibility between two individuals, and that's what usually starts new species, which I think is really cool. And so they did cytochrome C sequencing, and they found there is a significant amount of variance between that region and other, what was one time thought closely related fish. Um, they are, the close relatives are armored catfish, and just some of their appearance. Um, they're quite large. Uh, and they're very armored and they are bottom feeders and they also there are invasive species in Florida uh, these that have also gone from um, from down from South America to Florida and the freshwaters and they actually harass manatees but in the paper that just came out they mentioned when they did the geographical survey of the the new armored catfish that they identified it's primarily in South America and the Amazon area, but they mentioned that there are reports of them up further north in Mexico, as well as in Flor the Florida area. Can they be used as food? I don't know, Migzeneth. I don't know. I wonder... I wonder if it could be. There are invasive species, Migzeneth, in the past that have been suggested that why don't we just use them for food sources, but the flavor profile isn't especially good. Texture's like lobster, but it's very much like pork with a mild fishy taste. Huh. All right, I'm interested. I'm interested in McZenith. If they can save help the manatees, I'm even more interested. So uh, the new fish, consistency of lobster, flavor of pork with a tiny speck, speck of fish. It's a bottom feeder. Well, I mean, but optic, do you eat shrimp? possibly several offer invasive species being large port for legal and illegal animal cargo yeah which is super frustrating optic that that exists uh, but you know the the moving of animals in that way i there's a crazy amount of it actually uh, optic even not just invasive like on this size but also of insects being moved over borders there's just like everything left right and center you've seen it firsthand optic there was, speaking of smuggling, uh, Optic, there was a lab in when I was a graduate student. And they were trying to get fruit flies from China. And they were just fruit flies that had been genetically modified. And they asked the scientists if they could have some of these um, 
these fruit flies for experiments. But Optic, what started running into is the import-export licenses. So what the researchers did was, from China, they cut open a Hello Kitty plushie, they stuffed the fruit flies in vials into the Hello Kitty, sewed it back up, and mailed that. And then when it arrived, they cut open the Hello Kitty, and there were the flies. Yeah. It uh, the hello, I was shocked because our, my friend was like cutting open this giant Hello Kitty. And I was like, in the lab, I'm like, everything good? And she's just like, yeah, we got flies. Like, oh. I'm like, all right. Well, and sure enough, it was only a couple of vials of flies. And the issue would have been uh, if they actually used them for any experiments, uh, there would have been a difficulty because you have to put in your papers where you got the flies from. And if there's not the proper permits, you can't do it. And so it ended up not. It ended up being a non-issue, but it was still a fascinating way of doing that. By the way, so so published in the journal Fish Biology. I've never heard of it. I don't know what the impact factor is. I know it's an extremely specialized journal. And sure enough, the paper is just looking at the biology of the fish, right? So it was looking at again some sequencing, morphology, and some comparisons, both on the sequ sequencing front and the morphological front.